Yeah, Bycroft was established um, at, here at the, at the University of Edinburgh at the medical school um, because of the history of innovation. Uh, for example, the world's first cloned mammal was, was, was cloned here, Dolly the Sheep, at the Roslyn Institute, part of the, of, of the College of, uh, of Veterinary Studies. Um, the first genetically engineered hepatitis B vaccine was, was created here. So there's a strong history of innovation. Where we haven't been as strong in the past is perhaps uh, interacting with the pharmaceutical industry, and that's an area that we want to improve upon. Uh, we know we have lots to offer. We know that increasingly the pharmaceutical industry is looking towards academia to help fill its pipeline drug discovery at the early stages. And uh, effectively, we, we believe that, that we can be a strong partner in, uh, in helping them achieve that. Progress is being made. You've got uh, two of the first buildings uh, at Bioquarter being opened next year. Is it enough? Is it happening fast enough? Um, I think things are happening very fast at the moment. As you say, we've, we've, we've got the bioincubator building which will open towards the end of, of this year. We've got the Scottish Centre for Regenerative Medicine which will be open in the summer. That will be, uh, Scottish Centre for Regenerative Medicine will be another 200 researchers. The bioincubator will provide laboratory space for uh, a number of companies who want to relocate into the area. Um, we are looking at spinning out about 13 companies over, over the next two years. Um, that's some of those will be moving into the incubator, some of those will be based, based out of other places. Um, we're probably moving as fast as we can at the moment. What are your hopes for the future? I think in the future we want to, uh, as I said earlier, collaborate much more with the pharmaceutical industry, um, more collaborative agreements. I think another key element to what we're trying to do is to attract venture capital back in, in, into, into Scotland as well. Um, we're, as I said, with creating these 13 companies, they're going to rely upon development capital coming in. We need to attract the investors back into Scotland who can, who can uh, in, invest in those companies and, and take them forward. We hear frequent calls for greater collaboration. Uh, do you subscribe to the view that, that it is essential for science and research in Scotland? Yes. Um, the pharmaceutical industry I think has, has come to acknowledge over the last five years that whereas it is excellent in, in clinical development of new compounds, um, it perhaps hasn't been quite as productive as it wanted to be in terms of drug discovery. Uh, and, and so the, the pipelines are looking a bit thin at the moment, um, particularly with, with the patent cliff looming now, lots of their drugs are about to, to come off patent. They're looking to, to, to put more drugs into the hopper to, to bring them down through the pipeline and I think this is where academia can help and, and the pharmaceutical industry is now reaching out to, to universities like Edinburgh um, to, to look at how we can work together to, to improve their pipelines. How difficult is it to attract venture capitalists in a time of recession like we're in just now? It, at, at the moment it, it's difficult um, and in fact venture capital has been, has been moving from the UK over, over to the United States. However, uh, we think that what we're doing here is going to attract venture capitalists back uh, into Scotland and, and particularly back into Edinburgh. Um, we are looking to create 13 companies here over the next two years. Uh, there won't be many other areas, won't be any, any other universities that are able to compete with that. These aren't going to be one-trick ponies. These are going to be companies of substance. We've, got, uh, we've built a team of uh, industrialists, people with a background in the biotechnology industry, the pharmaceutical industry, they know what investors are looking for. We're putting together companies which will be built around three, four, five, six bits of intellectual property, multiple shots on goal. Um, we're going to incubate these companies internally, we're going to get all the ducks in a row and only take them out to the, the investment community when we think they're ready to go and we think they've got a substantial chance of raising money. So we're very confident we're going to be working with the venture capital community bringing them up to Edinburgh, showing them what we're doing. We're very confident with, with the offering that we will have over the next two years that we will be able to attract them back here again. Yeah, the, the, this institute that was sitting, the Queen's Medical Research Institute, was built on the, on the concept of bringing 650 researchers from different disciplines together in the same building. And, and, and when that happens, things tend to happen. Scientists meet over a cup of coffee, they come up with new ideas, come up with new ways of doing things, they share ideas. And, and that, that tends, to, things tend to accelerate from there. 
I guess the Edinburgh Science Triangle, you could almost see it as one stage further than that. Having a cluster of companies working in similar areas, um, can share technologies, can share ideas. We often have meetings where we come together, um, scientists talking about uh, what they do with other scientists. This, this, is, the way, this is the way science works, and, and uh, we, we see it as being tremendously valuable, being in the centre of that Edinburgh Science Triangle and, and, and sharing ideas with, with our partners.